Welcome to the world of the frightening and the gruesome, the haunting and the macabre. Join me now as we take a look at Joe Dante's 1981 werewolf classic, The Howling. It's forever horrible. Begin. Severely shaken after a near-fatal encounter with a serial killer, TV newscaster Karen White takes a much-needed time off. Hoping to conquer her inner demon, she heads for the colony, a secluded retreat where her new neighbors are just a tad too eager to make her feel at home. And when, after nights of being tormented by savage shrieks and unearthly cries, Karen ventures into the forest to find answers, where she makes a terrifying discovery. Now she must fight not only for her life, but for her very own soul. Now, good werewolf movies seem to be a little harder to come by than, say, vampire films, where there's a lot of different things you can do with vampires, just change them up, do all this type of dynamic, versatile things with vampires. They're still accessible, still have an audience, still marketable. Werewolves seem a little bit more narrow, that you have to do something a little bit more unique and clever and fresh and original to really make werewolves work on screen, to work in a film, to have a marketable quality to them. And Joe Dante is really that kind of director who can do a lot of unique things that throughout his career he's done stuff meshing horror and humor and very perfect blends. That you can do stuff like Gremlins, which is that perfect mixture of everything. Or something like The Birds, which, where it's very much a comedy but really good horror undertones. And it does its job making it funny and scary. And early on, this is Joe Dante, that he's really breaking through with this film and making a re it is very much a horror film. Don't get that wrong. But he has these nice elements of satire, elements of humor in it that really run through the underlying subtle pieces of the film that it has certain satire about the self-help movement going on at the time where you got this colony of people who actually happen to be werewolves which doesn't get revealed in the end but regardless of things you know there's a werewolf movie regardless so you got this colony of werewolves who are just trying to be reintegrated into society through the self-help therapy and everything so there's a certain satire that does become jokey or silly it's just it's smart it's clever it's subtle but Dante you can still f hit those little beats of humor here and there that just add a little extra spice a little extra flavor to things that just work really 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 well and one of the things that might not work for certain audiences maybe like a more modern audience is that it is a very very slow burn type of film slow building film that kind of like with Ridley Scott's Alien Joe Dante really pulls back, really doesn't show you the werewolves until a certain long off point in the film. And there is a very good sequence, he does, does this really good in some sequence, especially like the first sequence of the film where Karen White is out on the streets going to meet up with Eddie, this sort of serial killer, played remarkably well by Robert Picardo, again proving to me he's a great, solid, fantastic actor. And in this sequence, it's really good, subtle tension and suspense and great use of light and shadow to just kind of mask his presence and just show the whole, keep the horror in the darkness and just let the reactions sell everything. And I like that this isn't a film where just something scary happens and someone just screams like in any other horror film, like Karen White D. Wallace is so frightened she can't even scream. It takes the breath right out of her. She just gasps. She can't get the scream out of her. I love that kind of quality. It's a little different because a lot of times in horror films, horror films, people scream just, it seems like people just scream just for the sake of screaming. Like they're expected to do that even though it has no organic or natural feeling to it. They just, okay, something scary happens, I'm supposed to scream. This film does it really, really well. It doesn't go for screams. It just goes for that real kind of underlying choked up tension type of thing in certain places. But like I said, there's a slow build to revealing werewolves in the film. And it takes quite, it takes like more than half the film to get to that point. And some people might be turned off by that because in that sort of long second act of the film where they're at the colony and they're going, they're going through the therapy, they're building up little things here and there. You're kind of hungering for something that's a little more hard pounding, a little more exciting, a little more horror, and there's not really much there. So it's you have to be a little bit more interested in the characters, a little bit more interested in what's going on with D. Wallace's character, which D. Wallace does a fantastic job in this film. She really is a great conduit for the terror and fear that she's feeling 
for the audience to be a conduit through her that they can what she's feeling goes back and forth between the audience and you can really feel that really really well she does a great job and it's all very natural and organic and just flows very well from her and Robert Ricardo like I mentioned before fantastic he only has a few scenes but he does so much good stuff with that he's to me he's the most memorable thing about this film and he doesn't have all that much screen time he does a fantastic job you know under all the makeup the great Rob Bottin makeup most people would know Rob Bottin from his amazing work on John Carpenter's The Thing that groundbreaking spectacular work that quality's here too and all these werewolves such great work such amazing very finely detailed and brilliant makeup effects work and these werewolves they stand like seven feet tall they are towering beasts that when Joe Dante finally unleashes them on the screen he holds nothing back that's the thing if you feel like you're a little antsy waiting for something to really kind of come out and hit you as that kind of la lacking second act where there's not a lot of horror going on once he does unleash those werewolves he goes full bore full force into it and you get everything it is amazing it is great stuff and also howling is possibly one of the most beautiful horror films i've ever seen the cinematography is just gorgeous the use of color in this film is stunning all these gels that he uses the greens the blues the reds just creates a very saturated feeling to the film and they're just such a great thing with all the backlight and all the different the smoke and all this stuff the great camera angles are just so damn well shot and it creates this great atmosphere and everything that's going on in the film just enhances the quality of it it shows that when you've got someone who knows how to make a beautiful looking horror film it changes everything for you and this is just a great looking film there might be some things that just like it doesn't it doesn't quite get you that when I ran this thing way back when in the VHS era, I didn't it was that second act that didn't that kinda left me not being able to get into it. I can, it was it took me quite a few watches to actually get into watching the whole film. And I finally watched it and I was like, this is a really good film. I don't love it. I would like to have a little bit more meat horror wise in that second act, but there is that there's a couple sequences where it's just Dante's just showing you a, a claw or face, just real close shots or just a little piece of the werewolf that gives you a little something to go on. But like I said, the makeup effects are amazing and I cannot believe that they achieved this kind of stuff on a one and a half million dollar budget. It's stunning. You couldn't see, I, I can't imagine them doing this kind of quality in practical effects today with that kind of budget or even like double that budget, whatever it would be for inflation. I don't think they'd even consider going for that and Howling is a werewolf classic for all the right reasons it really is there's a great cast in this film you like yeah like I said you have D Wallace and Robert Picardo you got Kevin McCarthy you've got Dick Miller you've got Christopher Stone you've got uh, Patrick Mackney you got so many great solid actors in this film that really do all do do their all in this whole thing it is a really good movie I don't love it but I can appreciate every piece of artistic merit in this film and that final act, that last half hour of the film is great, it is, it's worth the payoff. The payoff is worth the wait, it really is. Because like I said, it goes full bore into it, you get every piece of werewolf horror action you could want in this film, in that third act. And the ending of this film, I will not spoil the ending if you don't know the ending of this film, it is great, it is a great, amazing ending. It is a shock, almost a shocker of ending that they go for this and is, is brilliantly crafted. And then it has a little bit of that Joe Dante humor then the little extra beat, a little extra scene, little pieces of everything that could end on where it is in that newsroom. But Dante just, whoever it is, the screenwriter or Dante, just take it that little extra step further and turn the thing on its head a little bit and make it a little, um, just as that little extra beat that makes it signature Joe Dante, so The Howling. I would definitely recommend it. You should definitely see it. There's no reason you shouldn't see The Howling. Werewolf movies are not easy to come by. Good ones are not easy to come by. And the sequels to The Howling are evidence of that in spades, and I will not review them all, but 
you will get my review of Howling 2, which you'll see very shortly. And Forever Horror Month will continue. There'll be more and more and more horror coming your way in the month of October. So if you want a little bit more insight on what I thought about the Howling, the link to the written, written review is in the description below. Check it out, and I'll be seeing you soon. Bye.